Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and this video we're breaking down the finale of Rick and Morty Season 6. Episode 10 is now here, and throughout this video we're going to be going through the latest entry scene by scene. This will cover all the easter eggs, hidden details, and things you missed, as well as our review of the episode and also the season. And the finale is called Rictional Mortoon's Rickmas Morcation. Try saying that faster. The episode is basically a Christmas themed one, and it's of course based on National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Throughout this video we're going to be going through it all, but please hit that thumbs up button one more time, and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the Rick and Morty Season 6 Finale. Now we start off with the title sequence covered in Christmas lights, which is what shows typically tend to do for a Christmas special. This is a tradition from throughout the ages, and it was seen as recently as the Guardians Holiday Special, with the Marvel Studios logo being covered in them too. At this point, Rick portals himself out of there, and he comes back as Rick Sanchez Claus. His name's of course Rick Sanchez, so so I I appreciate the little wordplay. Now he comes bearing gifts from the multiverse, and there's a couple of cool little lines here that you might miss. Now for Jerry, he gives him the extended version of Miracle on 34th Street. The back of the box says extended, and we learn that one from the alternate reality has two extra hours of footage. Now, sod all that, the, the important thing is that Rick gives Beth in space Beth the same photograph of her and him when they were younger from a universe where Beth wasn't murdered as a child. Wait, what? So Beth and Diane being murdered by Rick Prime is basically what changed the version of Rick that we follow. It was thought that Beth and Diane being murdered was the exception to the rule because every Rick has a Morty and there has to be a Beth for there to be one. However, this line might show that Beth's being murdered is just as common and when you think about it, this would explain why there's so many multiversal Ricks. Rick turned down portal travel and then ended up doing it because of their deaths which might be a rule that the other ones have followed too. Either way, I love how this is just randomly thrown out there and not really picked up on at all. I'm guessing that for every universe in which Beth died, that there's one where she didn't, and this is how we also have countless Mortys. This line also shows how they've come to accept that their Rick isn't really their Rick, but they've made do. We don't know which Beth is the original either, so he's also got one for Space Beth. He gets some money because she's 17, and you might remember that in the previously on segment from the Story Lord episode that we had her 18th birthday which clearly clued him into it not being a reality. He also gets Morty a lightsaber, and the handle looks exactly like Luke Skywalker's one from Return of the Jedi. However, the blade is blue, so it's not the same. I'm kicking off, you got the blade colour wrong, you f***ing Now this becomes really integral to the plot, and the gifts make it seem like Rick's genuinely putting thought into things, that he's grown as a person. However, we'll get into that more later on, and Morty goes to practice it within the garage, and Rick asks him to strike him down. This is of course what Ben and the Emperor both said in Star Wars, and it's a callback to their franchise. Strike me down! What? Strike me down! I'm not striking you down! Strike me down, Morty! I'll, I'll, I'll become a pile of clothes like that old guy! But if you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Strike me down with all of your hatred! and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Now at this point, Morty drops the lightsaber and it starts to travel vertically through the floor, similar to the acid blood from a facehugger and alien. Since nothing other than a lightsaber can block a lightsaber, it's now on its way to the Earth's core. They travel through several basement bunkers, and we see one with people in red sacks of liquid. And the red liquid could also be something that's shown up earlier in the series. During Season 4 Episode 2, we saw the character Tony in something exactly like this. From the episode we learned that it put the person in a simulation, which made them live out their version of heaven. The guy looks stuffed off to be woken up, and they travel to a sushi spot located beneath the house. Now this Asian themed restaurant could be a reference to a number of sci-fi movies. There was one in The Fifth Element, and hey stop stop typing, I'm, I'm gonna get to Blade Runner as well. Don't know why I mentioned Fifth Element first, but yeah, it, it's in them both, and it's sort of just a sci-fi movie convention. The chef here also seems like he's supposed to be on Sushi Master Jiro. He starred in a movie called Jiro Dreams of Sushi, which if you're interested in sushi, then yeah, go check that out. Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Not really. <laughs> Welcome to the sponsored part of the video. This video is sponsored by Manscaped. 
Manscaped is the perfect one-stop shop for all your holiday needs and they've got the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 now on sale. Manscaped offer a lot of things to help with your stocking stuffer, from the lawnmower 4.0, the weed whacker, shampoos, body washes, everything you need for your upstairs and your downstairs. They've got deodorants, gels, exfoliants, absolutely everything you need to keep it clean. I've been using this stuff for over two years now. It's the first thing I go to when I need to clean that chimney. And yeah, I can't recommend Manscaped highly enough. Don't let your chestnuts roast in the wrong boxes. Check out the Manscaped boxes. I've, ev I've even got them on now. Really help with chafing if you want to go for runs or long walks. You're not going to feel any friction and they're really going to help out. Now I've got a bit of a big schnoz. Uh, some nasty ear hairs started coming in as well. I've just turned 34. So the Weed Whacker has also been a massive lifesaver. The Shears 2.0 is their full kit for nail care with scissors, clippers, tweezers and a file for the travelling man. There's also the new Preserve Cologne which brings a lovely woodland smell to your tree trunk area. Now if you're still using a loofah as well, they've also just introduced the body buffer. Your old loofah will just be holding onto dead skin and cells whereas this new one will bring it in and it acts tougher but it feels smoother. And last but not least is the Lawnmower 4.0. Use this all the time. It's got skin safe technology. It's waterproof. Got a travel lock feature as well. So it doesn't set off when you're on the go. It's absolutely the perfect trimmer and it's great for you or a gift for someone else. They've got a massive holiday sale on right now with 20% off everything on the entire site and also free shipping. And all you have to do to get it is go to manscaped.com slash heavy spoilers. That's manscaped.com slash heavy spoilers for that 20% off and also free shipping. Manscaped.com slash heavy spoilers for the perfect gift that will be a holiday hit. Thanks. Fa -la 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 -la. Now at this point, the curtain is pulled back when Morty travels to level 10. We get a reveal that the Rick we've been following since roughly the midpoint of the Knights of the Sun entry is actually a robot. Thought they were going to say since the first episode of the season, but th that's not too bad. It means all the growth in the Master entry still happened, however this therapy also brought an epiphany with it. Rick realised that in the same way that he had several people who had him as a nemesis that they all dealt with deep rooted psychological issues. If he doesn't tackle his, then he'll deal with the same thing and thus he's been trying to track Prime Rick down. However it also extends beyond that. He realised that when Morty took the sword that he also doesn't respect him anymore. He let him in and he stopped listening to him and Rick felt betrayed by this. Now once the lightsaber drops down, we also get a call back to the previous entry. It's almost like someone designed me to be 22% more thoughtful than right, you. that's it. I'm shutting you down. Don't you- So, I'm gonna be like 22% more agreeable with you for like, maybe one episode or one adventure. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, Morty doesn't want to ruin Christmas, so he won't expose what's been revealed, and we go back to the living room. Here we see that it's the 1947 version of Miracle on 34th Street, and President Curtis arrives to kick off about the lightsaber. We get a mention of kyber crystals which are used within lightsabers and also a breakdown of the big problem Star Wars has. And you know what? Curtis is right. Had this discussion a lot recently when shows like Andor aren't getting watched and I feel like things might have gone too far. However, we fight on because we're one with the force. Now Curtis plays it off like he's above Star Wars and he doesn't care, but we learn that he's actually after the lightsaber for his own gain. Anyway, Morty takes Curtis into the basement whilst Rick does some butt matches. Can't really show any of these because of the whole butt thing, but this is what Prime Rick was doing in the tube back in episode 1. It's some of the only footage Rick has of him, and thus this is what he has to use. Back with Morty, we see crates being brought in, and this is through a portal doorway. This is something that the government have used before, and it popped up in season 3 episode 10 when we learned it was called the Nether Portal. Now this is actually a parody of the nether gate in Minecraft and it does also have lots of things that it's similar to. When people were placed in a prison in the negative zone during civil war, we also had doorways like this that allowed people to quickly put prisoners through. The lightsaber going to the core to blow the entire planet up is of course also a Star Wars reference and though a lightsaber wasn't used, proton torpedoes going to the core of the Death Star is what blew it up. Rick then arrives and says, Touch my shit and die. That's not a threat from me. That's how advanced my shit is. And this turns out to be true as well, as we see a scientist later die after touching his stuff. Rick's stuff is of course all booby trapped, and this too is mirrored in Rick Prime. One of his machines contains an explosive, which just has another explosive inside of it once it's all taken apart. There's so many good lines here about how if he wanted the government in his home, how he'd just buy an Alexa, and they've actually been used to help solve murders due to them being able to listen in. 
is also Curtis saying he looks like Phil Spector, wiped his ass with Randy Quaid, you know, maybe he does. Now, Rick volunteers to destroy the lightsaber, but they don't want his help at first. However, eventually they ask him, and I love this little dig at Jerry. I'm not touching that thing. I'll get neurotypical cooties. I have son-in-laws more imaginative. Rick sends in his own lightsaber, but its sentient AI sends it off course after it gets frustrated with all the questions. In Venice, it starts a murder spree, and we see as the family continue to watch the extended cut of Miracle on 34th Street. Interestingly, this movie also ended up getting its own holiday special in 1955, which is not, not that interesting, t to be honest. Now, slowly, Robot Rick's guilty conscience starts to get the better of him, and through questions, he answers that he's really a robot. Rick leaves Morty with a warning that if he lets people in, they'll betray him, and this is mirrored in what happens when they get the lightsaber. Both he and the president fly into the core of the planet like it's a second Death Star, and here they catch the blade. The president misses it at first, but Morty grabs it, which reminded me a lot of the catch scene at the start of Last Jedi, even though that was with the same character. Now, it turns out that the president thinks he now owns Star Wars, and I kind of think this is just a comment on fan gatekeeping and how everyone thinks they're the true fans, even though everyone knows I'm actually, I'm actually the true fan. If the Ralph McQuarrie Han Solo, yeah, if that isn't who you think is the true Han Solo, then you're not a true fan. You're not a f***ing fan. Now Morty returns home, and the family still haven't fully figured things out about Rickbot, so Morty just announces that he's a robot. I love how Jerry just instantly believes him and starts sawing into the arm to reveal lots of wires. We hear the song The First Noel, and over the top of this, we see the women of the family attacking him. Typically, Jerry hates getting involved in the action, and this of course is also seen here as well. Beth smashes a wine bottle, which I thought was hilarious, and Rickbot closes his eyes, accepting his fate. Turns out he's actually a death seeker, and huge shout out to TVTropes.org for pointing out that this is an archetype of a character that feels dishonor, and thus they seek out to die by someone else's hand. This is shown throughout the episode at several points, like the door closing later on, and the character wants to constantly be put out of his misery. Now, the ironic thing about Rickbot is that he actually has more humanity than the real one. We'll talk about how he's brought back later on, but even I was sad to see him go at this point. Now while the montage is going on, we also see the president practicing with his lightsaber. He puts a bowl on his head over his eyes, and this mimics the blast shield that Luke used to practice with in A New Hope. Also popped up in Attack of the Clones, and turns out that it was a real thing that the Jedi used to do, and not just something Obi-Wan gave him because it was lying around on the Millennium Falcon, it, it was really something there and, and George Lucas understood what he was doing. Now he drops it vertical, and back at the Smith Sanchez home, we see as they use Rickbot to decorate the tree. At this point, the president announces the lightsaber problem, and he blames Morty for it, and it's revealed he's in space. They bring Rickbot back online, and this is similar to how Ash was revived in the first Alien. Elsewhere in the basement, we also see that Rick has now tracked down Rick Prime. However, upon doing this, the signals immediately start to duplicate, showing how he's always one step ahead. You see as Rickbot gets a lightsaber, and with Morty, he travels out of the White House in space. This is sort of like a Death Star in a way. Well, let, let me explain before you kick off, as it's basically a base in space where the final confrontation happens. I kind of feel like the gold body Rickbot has might also be a not a C-3PO, and the president is very much a stand-in for the Emperor. We see he has a secret room with its own Mos Eisley cantina, a play on hand being frozen in carbonite, a TIE fighter, what's either a TIE interceptor, TIE bomber, or a TIE advanced. There's also an ATSD, a play on R2D2, and also the window from the second Death Star. Shoutouts to our editor Matt for saying that the president's basically Richie from Screen 5, and he's the obsessed fan that thinks he knows what's best. He sends in the battle droids, which are based on pit droids, but the robot with a lightsaber for eyes ends up destroying them all. Kind of feel like it's a comment on General Grievous, and he brings them all down. Morty goes to fire the lightsaber Gatling gun, and this shows that the president thinks what Star Wars needs is just more lightsabers and everything. Rickbot dives in the way in a get down Mr. President moment, and the lightsabers slide down vertically, which is where we get a better look at the carbonite. I'm not sure who this is meant to be, I, I thought it might be another president, but I can't really think of who that looks like. However, if you know, you know where to drop it. Now this cuts a hole in the floor, and I love how Rickbot still denies he's a robot. He loses his hand in classic Star Wars fashion, and is saved by the real Rick using portal tech. 
The death speech is so good, and it shows that if Rick built him, then he does really care. The episode ends with Rick inviting Morty to come down and join him to find Rick Prime. The season then closes out with a tirade of Rick going off explaining what season 7's gonna be, and this is very similar to the Rick and Morty for 100 years thing that he did in episode 1. He says them hunting him won't be every episode, but it'll be laced through some of them, and we might not even know if they're doing it in the background. Only they'll know about it though, and from here we jump to the post credit scene. Now in typical season finale fashion, we join Mr Poopy Butthole. Whereas the last one had him at home explaining how he'd lost it all, we see him here in the gym working out. Love the little detail on the episode description as well, and if we pause it, we can see, this is an episode, watch it, just watch me, do it again, you already did it. Fill the holes of your meaningless existence with more of this same content, which is nice. Now he drinks a raw egg similar to Rocky and breaks his legs trying to squat too much. Guy still wants to reach out to Amy, who, who hasn't blocked, and we also get a mention of Roy from the Life Well Lived game. And that ends the series, which, yeah, I enjoyed it. Rank, you know what? It ranks up there as one of my favourite ones. Yes, I'm shilling. So yeah, had a blast with the season, and I hope you had a good time too. Thank you for rocking with me every week. What do you mean you skipped episode 5 breakdown, you f***ing shit? I'll f***ing kill you! Anyway, that's the video, and let me know your thoughts below on the episode and the season. We are in a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of House of the Dragon Season 1 on the 15th of December and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the episode. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out another breakdown linked on screen now. We've got the boys spin off trailer Gen V, it's a good one so yeah go head over there right after this. Do you like Transformers? Might, might have that as well on the channel. Go check it out, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. You take care of yourself. Peace.